<laughs> Let's see if I can trip over some of these balls. Oops. <laughs> okay. Um, hi. My name is Andy Tarr, and I'm going to be giving the, uh, the first keynote here on the state of Joomla. I've um, actually relatively new to Joomla compared to a lot of other people. I started um, in the fall of 08 when Joomla was actually Joomla, and I got to start on 1.5 rather than Mambo or 1.0. So I didn't go through some of the pain that uh, some of the others did. Uh, but I've been in the IT industry for about 33 years now. Um, and I've been doing web development since the, uh, since the 90s. So I've been in the field for a while. I first got into very involved in Joomla itself as part of the Google Summer of Code in 2009. Um, and I had done a few sites before that and had written an extension or two and then really got into it and started working on the project itself um, in the summer of 2009 when I wrote the accessibility template for 1.6 uh, Hathor, which um, was great in 2.5 and is still around in um, 3.0, though it's not, um, it could use a little help now. <laughs> um, okay. And, um, Currently, I'm working for Metascale and Sears Holdings as uh, a Joomla slash PHP architect. So I get to do Joomla in my, my normal life. So we're going to go over a few things today on, on where Joomla is and what's happening with it. We'll be going over the code and the people, since the people are a huge part of what Joomla is and um, where it's going. We're going to go over the adoption of Joomla. How are we doing in the marketplace? And then finally, we're going to go over the roadmap. Um, I should have mentioned my introduction that I'm on the production leadership team for Joomla, which is the group that's responsible for the code of Joomla. And we published a roadmap last fall that showed where we want to go with um, the actual code on Joomla. So. What I'm going to be doing here is sort of a status report on going over those 12 items and where we are and uh, what's happening with them. So we'll start with the code. It's always the fun part for me. And how many people here are developers of some sort or another? Yeah, that's what I like to see. You go to a Joomla day and it's like two people raise their hand. <laughs> so. Okay, so um, just a little tiny bit of history. It started with the CMS, and that gave us just about everything we wanted. And the big part of it, kind of the heart of Joomla, was the Joomla library. And so a couple of years ago, sorry, get this working. And so a couple of years ago, we decided to pull out that library as a platform so that additional things could be done that, so it wouldn't be limited to just the CMS. And we had the platform project come out. And that was a really cool experiment. And one of the reasons we did it was that we wanted to be able to um, add additional things in the platform that the CMS didn't really need so that we could kind of expand the use of that and uh, make it easier to do additional things with web development that weren't necessarily content management. Now, though, we've found that there, it probably wasn't the ideal solution. It got us further along, but we found that the CMS had problems because we needed to make some changes, but those things were in the platform, but the platform didn't really want to change it necessarily because, oh, that's just the CMS, but it's not necessarily what they want for everything else. And then they found that they wanted to make some changes um, to make it more widely adaptable, and they were held back by what they needed for the CMS. So what has been decided recently is that we're going to be reabsorbing the platform back into the CMS so that if we have bugs or changes that affect the Joomla library itself, we can just make them directly when we need it. 
and then we are creating the framework, which is taking what was the platform, pulling it out, taking out any of just the CMS-centric centric things in it, um, and releasing that separately. That's going should be released um, this summer sometime. It's nearly there and ready to go. And by doing that, the framework will be able to um, add additional things that um, you really wouldn't be able to do when you've got the CMS on there just because of the rate of adoption that we don't want to keep making major changes to the CMS too quickly for everybody. So this way they can go ahead and do that in the framework. It'll also be set up so that we can grab pieces of it back rather than having to grab the entire thing. We'd be able to just say, oh, that's a nice little feature that they have there and everything will be independent. So we'll be able to just grab little bits and pieces of it back in and use it within the CMS. Now, our code is architecturally strong. That's one of the really nice things about it. If you go and you compare it to, say, WordPress or Drupal, there's some really good things about it. And it's getting stronger. We've got um, our issue tracker had a lot of old issues in it that had been there from you know 1.5 and just kind of kept hanging on. And we've recently gone through and we've cleaned up a lot of those so there aren't as many of those hanging around. Um, we're also doing a little bit more in how we're going to be doing the, the releasing. Currently, as most of you probably know, we've got the repository on GitHub, and we've got a master branch there. And we've always had a stable branch policy, so that at any point in time, if we have to, we've got a stable branch that we can release it. So, you know, if a security issue comes up or something that we need to just put something in quickly and do a quick release, it, we're at a point where we can do that. However, we're wanting to get into more of doing testing and some automated things. And so it makes it a lot easier if we add an additional step and we have a staging branch where we're putting our commits in. And the staging branch will, will also be stable, but we can then run a number of automated testing tests on that. And when it passes everything, we can go ahead and merge it into the master branch. And that'll make things even more stable. So in the next uh, couple of weeks, we'll end up starting to do pull requests against the staging branch as opposed to the master branch, and there'll be more information out on this as well. So we just had release 3.1 come out, and <laughs> um, one of the nice things about release 3.1 is we managed to get in there a new feature that people have been asking for for a long time, which is tags. So how many people were glad that tags got in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Um, it was just one. We didn't get a lot of different things in, but what we got in was good. We're also looking at making another change um, coming up in a, a, a minor release, and that should make it easier to do your upgrades that right now, if you go and you install, let's say you're going from 2.5 and you want to go to 3, um, or you're wanting to update somebody's uh, extension, there are a number of pre-checks that happen in, if you're installing a new version, say, of Joomla. But if you go through the one-click update, you don't necessarily see those pre-checks. So it's not checking to see our you know, magic quotes off or on. Um, and you can get into some trouble that way. So one of the things that we're doing is we're putting all of those pre-checks right into the one-click install. And the way we're doing it, we're going to be adding in, um, and this is partly going to be staged in, in but um, the ability that you would be able to do dependencies so that like extension developers would be able to say that you have to make sure that you have this installed and that installed and this one and this one so that you can check additional dependencies. Um, it'll also allow you to look and let's say you are doing you know your updates um, you can check 
the status of the extensions that you have to see if they're ready for that update. So I think that'll be um, a really good thing to, to help people not get into trouble and find out in the middle of doing an update that, oh, their, their vital extension that they have and can't do without isn't quite ready to go move up. Then there's always release 3.2 is coming up. It will be coming out in the fall. Um, and one important thing about this that we announced when we added the 3.2 release, because as you may or may not remember, we originally were just going to go 3.0, 3.1, bang, 3.5 would be coming out this September. But um, it seemed that that was giving um, too much change too fast for people. We wanted to extend, number one, the life of 2.5 so that you could have that longer and also just extend how long the 3 series would be around. The other thing that we found was that when we have the, the 0.5 series, you know, all of our, all of our, our releases are stable, but the 3.5 is more static as opposed to just stable. We try not to make a lot of changes. But as you found, that when we came out with 2.5, we continued to add things to it because, mostly, we were now starting to work on 3.0, which we hadn't had time for before. So now that we're working on 3.0, we're finding the things we need to add to 2.5 in order to make it easier for you to move over to 3.0. So we didn't want the same thing to happen. We also found out that we had about two months to work on 3.0 before we were into feature freeze for, and that really wasn't enough time. So by adding in the 3.2 series, it gives you an extra six months um, to the whole cycle period. Plus, it means that when we issue 3.2, that is going to be a fairly, that is going to be as static a release as 2.5 was. It's the last release, oops, went too far. It's the last release we have that we're going to be putting new features in. So if when we put the new features in that, um, it means that when we come to 3.5, the only changes we're going to be making between 2.5 and 3.5 are those things that we need in order to help you to go to 4.0, or of course bugs and security releases. So that actually gives you almost a year of a code base that is basically not moving. It also means that because we're not depending on spending all of our time devoting ourselves to 3.0, we're able to go ahead and start on working on 4. And it gives us a year to work on 4. So we have a few things in the pipeline that we're hoping we'll get into 3.2. We can't promise that any of these are getting in, but these are all being actively worked on right now. And if you happen to be working on anything and you want to see it get into 3.2, just be aware that we come up with the beta, which means feature freeze, for release two months before it's released. So that means we're expecting beta for 3.2 that will probably be out in the middle of July, which is in six weeks. So if you have any features you want in 3.2, or the actually new features in the three series, now's your time to be uh, making sure that you're getting them completed. It looks like we are likely to have version control in 3.2. We've got a pull request on it now, and um, so assuming everything goes fine and everything gets accepted, we're going to have version control. <laughs> the tags, we're doing improvements on that, and we're going to actually have a tag manager for a type manager for the different tags so that you can have the different types there and the UI for that is, um, is easier. We're also looking at adding in um, some rapid application development. Web services, we're working actively on web services to get that in. UCM, we won't have complete UCM in it, but we're looking at getting some of the parts for that in so that people can start, um, again, doing some forward thinking on that. And then we have a thing called the pull tester. 
Um, some of you that do development and are in and out of GitHub and just, just fine might not be as interested in this, but this is a, a cute little thing that's kind of been kicking around for a while that will allow you to just install an extension on um, a Joomla install and you can actually go through and select a patch or, or pull request that you want to have um, installed on that Joomla extension. So that means that if we have testers out there, we can get them, they don't have to figure out how to put a, a, um, a local server on their laptop, their home computer, they don't have to figure out get and get that installed on their computer. All they have to do are the things they're very familiar with and that is, you know, download Joomla, uh, download and install Joomla, download an extension and install it and then click a button and get the patch applied and then later they could unapply it. So it'll make it a lot easier to get testers actually testing. There are a few other things that are in the pipeline. We've got Google Summer of Code again this year, yay. We've got nine projects happening on that. And uh, this is a list of all the different things that are gonna be going on here. And so you can see there are a couple of interesting things. Now, um, again, these are, these are the projects that the students are doing. There's no guarantee that they're gonna get them done successfully or get them done to a level that we can get them into the code, but that's the aim. Uh, we, we wanted to be pretty clear this, this year that we did things that were practical and doable and that we could actually use and the project needed. So as you can see, there are a couple of interesting things in there. We have a new thing that we're doing this year and that's the, uh, the GNOME Outreach Program for Women and it's very much like uh, the GSOC program except gosh darn, only women can do it. And it's one of the ways that we're trying to encourage, um, you know, more women to get involved in it. And we have a project here that would be a front end ed editor for menus and modules so that you'd actually be able to, you know, have some content and add it to a menu and do some of that all on the front end. Okay, so that's our code, which is kind of exciting. But as I said before, one of the big things about Joomla is its people. Um, we are a, a community that is putting this together by volunteer work. And if you didn't have the community, you wouldn't have Joomla. So where are we in terms of, you know, what are our volunteers? What is the excitement with Joomla? Well, all I can say about that is that life is good. <laughs> Things are really looking up for this. We've got new volunteers coming up just this past winter. Um, we've gotten a real spike in the number of volunteers that are coming. They are staying, uh, it's a steady increase we've been having for a couple of years, but just recently it's been um, a lot more. And they've been staying around longer. We've had people who used to be in Joomla who are coming back. So it's really looking good for um, volunteers that we have and the work that's going on with Joomla. Now we've actually got some extension developers who are working on the project now, which is always nice. And one of the reasons I think that some of this is happening um, has been the quick development cycle that we have. While we want to make sure that we're doing a balance so that we don't take things too quickly for the end users, it's always nice for people to be able to actually see their stuff get into core or to see their code getting used. And there's nothing more discouraging than spending time volunteering to write stuff and then never see it get used or see it sit out there and get stale. And so we've been putting an effort into trying to make sure that that doesn't happen. Now it can still happen occasionally, but hopefully it's a lot less than it used to. We've actually added recently more committers. So now we don't just have a couple of people doing it. We've got additional people, which will stop some of the bottleneck that we'd had in trying to get things in. Um, so if you want to see the volunteer information and who's actually volunteering and some of the stuff, one of the things that's really cool on the new developer website, the developer.joomla.org, 
I don't know if you've been there recently, but in the last couple of months, we've made some major changes there. And one of the things we've added are some statistics and pretty graphs. They're always fun. So this one we have is the bug squad activity in the last 12 months. So you can see that there are a few people who do a lot of work. Um, but there are a number of people that go down and have, have done quite a bit as well. So that while it's nice having those people way at the top, what's even nicer is the depth that we have of the number of people who are in there and are helping. Then we've got the activity by type. So you can see that when you're in the bug squad or you're doing things, we need different types of people. We need people who are going to go in there and actually do what one thinks of when you're bug squishing, and that is fix the bug, do the coding. But we need people who are um, just looking through them to see if they've been tested, to see what the status is on them. We also need people who are actually going to do the testing because we don't want to just take, here's your code, throw it up there. We need to make sure we're doing testing. And so these are the different types of things of, that people are, are working on. And uh, these are the total open issues. Now, this is kind of a funky graph because I don't know if you'll notice the little fine print here. No data available before April 23rd. So this has only been going on for a month. <laughs> so there's not a lot of change. Those are the four weeks. But um, as time goes on, that'll be more interesting. But this just shows the things that are happening with the tracker, what's getting open, what's getting closed, um, w actually where are things during the different time periods. So you can see, you know, are we trending up to having too many open ones? Are we able to be closing them and fixing them? And then this one is what is open and what is being closed. So you can see we did a lot of work recently right here, March through May, which makes a lot of sense since, since that's when the uh, 3.1 release was coming out. This one is, is uh, a, little, a little strange, th but this is the documentation. We now have some stats on documentation. It's only for the last 30 days, um, but I don't know if you can see this down here, but it, it's saying that you know, the number of edits up to 3,000. So, you know, Thank you, George and Tom. <laughs> However, even though we've got a lot of volunteers and we've been getting more, we can always use more people, especially we need designers. There's stuff going on with that. So if you're a designer, that doesn't mean that you can't help us on the project. And as always, we need more people who are testing. And as I said before, one of the things with that is we're trying to make it easier for people to test because a, a lot of times the, the testers don't have to be coders. Um, we can have the coders doing coders, and the coders can test as well, but it's an area that even if you're not a coder, it's really good to have, it, have you testing it. One of the other things that's really nice is that we've been doing lately is we've been getting it so that um, you can test it in different places. Always before what would happen is that you would take your local computer, you would set it up so it pretends like it's a server, and you would do your testing um, on a local instance of Joomla there, which is all very nice, but then when everything gets released and you go out and you're on all of these different shared servers, that's when you start finding out you know, that, that out in the wild it's a little bit different. So with the setup on GitHub, um, there are ways that you can actually just download an installable version of Joomla with the patch on it. And then you can take that and you can install that wherever you need to. So if you don't have your local computer set up so that it's a server, but you have access to a server online somewhere, um, and there are plenty of free services out there that can be more and less challenging to be able to do Joomla on, you'd be able to just take it and put it up there and test it there as well. All right, so the adoption of Joomla. 
We've got the code, we've got the people. You know, we've drunk the Kool-Aid, we know what's going on, um, but what about the rest of the world? How well are we, adopt are we getting Joomla out there and people adopting it? Well, there is some bad news on there, um, and I know some people have probably seen this chart, but if you go and you look at Google Trends, here's Drupal, this little red line. There's WordPress, and here is Joomla. So we, we were up at our best in 2009, and we had started coming down since then. Um, so what we want to do, while you can't just take you know, one um, statistic and look at that as being, you know, the, this is the global truth for everything, it is always worrying when you see something like that. So we do have some better news if you start looking at some other stats. Um, this one right here is the um, built with, and you can see that we're not, we're not going through that same kind of um, drop off there. So people are still building with it, they are still out there. And again, if we look at the uh, W3 tech, you can see you've got WordPress up there with the 82%, Joomla's right after it with a 3.2, um, followed by Drupal, and you can see that we're still going up there. And again, they listed the most popular, fastest growing, I should say, um, content management systems. And we're still hit on that list as well. And this is another little chart that they have to show, sort of show where the market is um, in terms of what sites are being used by some of the more popular um, CMSs. And it's really no surprise there. It kind of follows what the... Uh, uh, kind of perceived positions are for the, the three, Joomla, Drupal, and WordPress. Up at the top, for the larger sites, you've got Drupal. Um, WordPress is way over there of having bazillions of sites, and you've got Joomla kind of in the middle. This is Google Analytics for looking at Joomla.org. And so we've, played, we've stayed fairly steady. It's gone down a little bit. Part of that is last year we had some major difficulties with the forum. Um, so what you would see there is we had a huge drop off in the number of people going to the forum, which is reflected in this as well. But we do have some good news that's really showing things going up. And that is, a lot of the stuff we've been concentrating on is, is trying to get a lot of more of the internationalization, um, getting away from being so totally English-centric. And the second largest uh, language population that uses Joomla is Spanish. So um, this is just one thing that we started doing was on the uh, Joomla magazine. They had had occasional um, Spanish articles in there, and we started adding in additional articles recently so that you'd have, you know, a fair number of, article, of Spanish articles in each edition. And you can see what happened in, this is just for South America's um, uptake on the visits for the magazine itself. So it's getting up there. If we can get it out there, they're, they're coming for it. So part of our three-year vision is to increase the adoption. We want, we want to improve how many people are out there and are seeing it and coming for it. Um, so we're doing a couple of things that um, we want to do to try to improve that. One of the things is to try to understand who are our users, um, what do we need to do there? You know, once we understand that, what do we, what do we need to do to keep them being our users? And so, w you may have seen a blog recently that happened in on the site that talked about getting some surveys going and getting a group together to go ahead and do this. Um, and Paul is is leading that. So, um, if you have any interest in that, you can see Paul Orwick. And um, 
help him help him with that. But this is one of the responses that we have to seeing some of these lower numbers. We really want to make sure that um, we don't just ignore things. We're also there's always the marketing aspect, um, trying to go out and get more marketing for Joomla itself, not, not, you know, not for a specific company that's out there or anything, but just getting the word out on Joomla and where it fits and what people can do with it. So as I said before, we just want to make sure that we balance certain things. We need to keep stability for our existing customers. We want to make sure that we don't go out there and just you know, totally pull the rug out from under them, um, as has been done at various times. But at the same time, in order to get, continue to get new customers and to keep those other customers happy when they start looking around and seeing what else people can do, we want to make sure that we're keeping current with what is actually going on the web. We don't want to end up as a little backwater behind of, yeah, that, that worked three years ago and it's still working now, so I'm not going to touch it. Um, we can do that and we'll stay around for another five or ten years, um, but you all know what some of those sites are like from five or ten years ago. Okay, so we've gone through the code, we've gone through the people, we've gone through some of the uh, adoption things. So the last thing I want to go over is the roadmap that we had um, published before as to what we wanted to do and where we wanted to go. And if you want to look at it, it's on our developer site under roadmap. So the very first thing we were going to do is we were going to reconcile the Joomla platform. And what that is, is that is what I talked about earlier about the fact that we had split the CMS and the platform apart into two. And now we're pulling the framework separate. So now that the framework is separate, the CMS is taking control back over the platform and putting it back in the CMS. So this isn't anything that you know users really will see at all, but it's an underlying code change that needed to happen. And what users will see from it is that we're able to respond more quickly to bugs and issues that affect, um, that are coming through the platform. And where are we with that? That one's done. We're all set on that one. Um, so the second one we had there was to roll back the MVC legacy code. One of the things that happened when, with the platform when it was on its own is there was a conflict of names that occurred um, that we, they reused some of the class names that we already had in the other one. And so it meant that people had to go back in and rename everything as legacy. So what we want to do is make it so that you can either have the legacy or not have the legacy. And um, it'll still work appropriately. What's happening with that right now is we're still in discussions on it, on the best way to do it, so that we make sure that if you change to legacy, you don't have to change again. And so that if you haven't changed to legacy, you won't have to. And if you want to use the new version, you'll still be able to do that. So we're trying to keep all of those things working together. Um, and so we're still a little bit on discussions of the exact best way to do that. Um, okay, we're looking at the, um, the rapid application development. Um, and we're planning, hopefully, to get something in for 3.2 on that. It was sort of a last minute thing. We almost got something into 3.1, but it was just a little bit too close to the line to be able to, to jump on it. So with the additional time, we're going back and we're relooking at the whole thing and coming up with sort of a forward thinking way on how we want to be handling that. And it's got a very active working group working on it. And um, so hopefully that will all work out well. And we'll see that in 3.2. We're also looking, this is again a, sort of a back thing, along with the uh, merging the platform back, we're, we had a legacy library at the same time, um, and we're looking at merging that all in together to make things simpler. So that should be in there for, for 3.2. It's nearly done now. The other thing we want to do is we want to increase the Joomla test coverage. If you look at the actual list on this, it says increase the Joomla library unit test coverage. But um, 
All right, up here I'm just showing it. It's expanded a little bit because there, there are different kinds of testing you can do. Unit testing is great for the, the low-level things. The problem with it, and what you can do with that is you can then check to see that, oh, you go in and you make a change. Does everything that worked before still work? The problem is, is that the way the code is written in Joomla right now, um, even if we got complete coverage with unit tests for everything could be, that could be unit tested, it would be about, you know, this little percent um, just because of the way the Joomla code was written and all of its dependencies. So in addition to doing the unit testing where we can, we're looking at doing some Selenium testing, which is more of um, a higher end thing. In other words, if I go into a Joomla instance and I want to be able to do, you know, I do these keystrokes, I do X, Y, Z, this is what should come back and it should work. And so we're looking at getting more coverage um, in that sense over it. So right now, it's a little slow going, but as I said, we have um, gotten a, a, a number more of, of the, um, the selenium testings happening. Okay, so this one is create distribution for CMS packages. What this is, is let's say you have um, um, oh, a church. And so there are a number of things that you're going to want to have on there just normally. And rather than going from the beginning and starting all over, it'd be nice to just grab down, oh, I want this distribution and it, I don't need this, this, or that. Or maybe you're doing you know, an e-commerce site and I, oh, I need to make sure I have this, but I don't want that. And that's the kind of thing that we're talking about here. And right now we're still in discussions on how exactly we want to handle this. But one of the holdups on it is we're looking at seeing how the App Store is um, going to be set up and what's happening with that. And if you're not familiar with that, that is one of the other goals of the project is to make it so that rather than just having the JED, which is a listing of the various applications you have, to have it so that if you're actually in Joomla itself, you'd be able to access that and pull down, you know, um, extensions from there and be able to install it right from that to sort of make it all self-contained. So we're looking to see how that is set up so that we can coordinate this in with um, what's done with that. So then we have the unified content model, the UCM. Um, we're working on this. It's to, there's a working group that is, is doing it. We're hoping to get parts of it into release 3.2. It won't be um, an entire thing, but it'll be, it'll be part of it so that people can be working with it. And what this should do is it should actually help, um, help with development and how you're going to be um, more easily able to create things that will work together and um, make the development easier. We've got the unified page model. And what the unified page model is, is right now, if you're creating a website and you have a page, well, you create your content here, and then you go over to here, and you create a module or two, and then you go over here, and you create a menu item, and then you go back to your modules, and you say, oh, let's assign this to that menu. And so you're sort of having to go all over the place and wander to here and wander to there just to create a single thing. And so what we want to be able to do is have just this concept of here's a web page and be able to create a web page um, using that kind of a concept so that you're in one place, you'll be able to bring things into it. Um, part of this is probably getting rid of the item ID on it too. That's for a future release. We're not quite there yet. <laughs> Another thing is the unified site administration. And what this is, is, is right now you've got your front end and you've got your back end. And if you want to do anything where you're creating content or you're creating structure for your site, you go to your back end. If you want to look at your site, you go to your front end. Now, on your front end right now, you can add a piece of content. You know, you can add an article. You can submit a web link. 
you can add an article, you can submit a web link. That's, you know, about all you can do. And so what we want to be able to do is with the, um, with the unified site admin is to be set it up in such a way that you would be able to do admin different places. For instance, you'd be able to do it through the front end. So that let's say you as a site developer set the whole thing up and you're in there doing the really complicated things in the background, but you want the people you turn it over to, to be able to make some changes, like, you know, they're adding new content, so they need to add a new menu item to an existing menu. Um, they need to be able to make some changes to a module or do something. But you don't really want them in the back end. Um, this is a way that you would be able to add more things that will actually be able to be done from the front end itself. And parts of this could actually be in 3.2. Um, some of the uh, GSOC um, projects that are being done will affect this and will let us get a few things in. So if those get done, we'll have some of this. The new feature implementation. What this is, is we've got the ideas.joomla.com and there are some things on there that people have been wanting. So this is trying to do some revamping on that to make sure that we're actually looking at that and seeing how we can make the, actually make that effective, plus looking at it and seeing if we can get some of those features actually into the system. So a couple of the things, um, we got tagging in, and it looks like um, the version, versioning for the content is likely to go in for 3.2, so we've got those two big things. Another big thing that's on there has been the multi-site, and I'll say right now that one of the, the stopping points for getting that in is that nobody can agree on what multi-site means. We've got about four different versions going through as to what people want, so we almost need to come up with four different things. And then we'll have more of these into the future releases. UX and accessibility. We really want to be hitting more on those. Um, we had major changes going into 3.0 on the UX, and we have a, an active UX group. It's a little different than the original one, but uh, we've got that going. Accessibility, we did a really good job in 1.6 to 2.5. We didn't do as good a job of keeping that in when we went to 3. Um, so it, it's actually a little disappointing that Angie wasn't be able to able to make it and the accessibility um, session was canceled because um, we do have an accessibility group but it's not as active. So if there is anybody who is interested in accessibility, um, that is something that we'd really be interested in. And then the final roadmap thing is on internationalization and we really um, want to make sure that we keep the push on for this. We are a global organization. Um, sometimes we tend to forget that. Um, but you'll notice the little chart I showed you with at least getting some of the, um, uh, the Spanish articles into the magazine. We are also looking at getting Joomla.org actually being uh, multilingual, which will be a big, a big plus. So we are looking on doing a lot of that. So this is just an ongoing, um, something that we're doing on an ongoing basis. So that's our, the code, the people, the adoption, and doing the, uh, going through the status on what the roadmap is. I'm sorry I didn't have a few more jokes in there. I'm not too good at those. <laughs> Um, so I have about two minutes left if there are any um, one or two questions that people might have. I bored you that much, you're asleep. Okay, I got it. All right. Okay. Oh, oh I think we got one here. So, the summer of, oh. <laughs> <laughs> the, the summer of code uh, projects are uh, too late for the 3.2 uh, deadline. Um, well, the nice thing about the projects that we have for that is that they are being done in pieces. So what we're looking at those, as, some of the code is actually already 
um, being written right now. We should get some of it going in in June and in July so that they'll be doing it in, in little sections in units. So we still are hopeful that a lot of that would be able to get in. Hey, Andy, thank you very much.